Hello all, my name is Serena Carpenter and I teach online media here at the Cronkite School. So I'm very excited to introduce Regina McCombs tonight. And she is a faculty member at the Pointer Institute where she teaches social media, multimedia, and data journalism. Today she's going to address audience behavior and how and whether people engage with news on mobile devices. Um, previously she worked at the Star Tribune in Minneapolis, St. Paul, where actually our own Tim McGuire hired her and she also worked at Care Television News in Minneapolis St. Paul which is an NPPA uh, award-winning television station so I'm very excited to have her speak tonight just as a reminder if you're going to tweet please tweet your questions with the Kronk MSM hashtag so if you want to address Regina please use that particular hashtag so Regina can you please come up thank you Well, hi, thank you for having me. This is the first time I've ever worn one of these kind of microphones. I kind of feel like a rock star. <laughs> it's very exciting. Um, so I'm gonna talk about phones, tablets, and the future of news. Is this like so loud everyone's cringing? Maybe it's just me. Um, okay, so. Chris, are you back there? Can we see my PowerPoint, please, sir? Not that it's all that exciting, but. There we go, yay. I feel so much more comfortable. All right, so I'm gonna sort of talk a lot. First, we're gonna talk um, about the research on phones and tablets and what we're learning. Um, frankly, all the research is a hair suspect. I will tell you that right off the bat. Um, it's starting to be replicated. We're starting to see more and more things coming out saying the same thing, which makes it a lot more reliable. But for a long time, there's sort of been one study that said one thing and another study that said another, and there wasn't a lot of consistency. So we're finally starting to see some things that actually might be true. Uh, so take everything with a little grain of salt. Uh, and then I'm gonna talk sort of about, I'm gonna talk first about what we know about how people are using phones and tablets. And then I'm gonna talk about what we know about people's use of news on phones and tablets. And then we're gonna take a quick look at a few organizations that are working on developing mobile products for news. So, here's why we care. Uh, by age four, kids, 60% uh, of these guys have used a computer, 43% a digital camera, 32% a smartphone, and 25% an iPod and 14% have used a tablet. So that's by age four, so consider by age eight, by age 12. Um, you guys are of a generation that's already incredibly comfortable with phones, but these are gonna be kids raised on tablets and smartphones. Um, you've probably seen this statistic before, but um, sometime next year or the year after, we expect the number of people accessing the internet via mobile devices to surpass the number of people accessing the internet via wired devices. Now this is globally, and there are whole parts of the world where their main form of internet access is via cellular networks, so take that into account. Um, but this is one of the reasons you know, that we care, because this, the consumption of internet access is moving so quickly onto cellular networks. However, right now, um, traffic from connected devices, which is tablets, phones, e-readers that connect to the internet, um, Wii's, everything else that might be connected to the internet, are only about 8% of the total traffic on the internet. So still not a huge amount, but um, growing very, very quickly. All right, so here's what we know about mobile phones and who owns them. In the US, about 90% of people now own cell phones. We're actually quite far behind a lot of countries. Um, 72% Canada, 61% in India, but then you've got 112% in Spain, Chile, Denmark, and Hong Kong. In fact, most people in Hong Kong have two phones. Uh, a lot of people have them, one to call the mainland China and one to call on Hong Kong, in Hong Kong itself. So there are a lot of countries where people own two and three cell phones. So um, we're not even to one cell phone per person yet, but it's growing fast. However, if you look at people uh, 18 to 34, it's uh, at 95%. Now, I suspect that among college students, that number is 
100%? Anybody doesn't have one? I talked to one teacher who said she had a student who didn't have one in protest. Uh, <laughs> but that was the only, the only uh, college students I know of that don't have cell phones. All right, no surprise, most using it to send text messages and take pictures. Um, but about two-thirds of people uh, with cell phones in that 18 to 34-year-old bracket are using their phones to go online. Uh, the numbers of people who own smartphones have just risen to right, we're just under half of people who own smartphones. Um, and about 60% of all the new phones sold now are smartphones. This is in the U.S. So you say, why do we care about smartphones? Well, we care because smartphones enable much easier internet access. And for news providers, that's a big part of how we get our news. What's particularly interesting about mobile internet access in the US is how heavy um, minority communities depend on their cell phones for mobile internet access. So it's half of all American, African American adults in the US now have internet access via their mobile phones. 45% of Hispanic adults compared to only 30% of whites. So much stronger consumption for minority communities. Um, and you can see that's pretty, what, pretty directly reflected in whether or not they own a smartphone or a feature phone. And again, whites much less likely to own a smartphone than other minority communities. So really important for those of us trying to reach Hispanic, African-American audiences to have good mobile products. All right, and we know that smartphones very much are replacing PCs for people um, and extending that desktop experience. 81% um, use their phones to browse the internet, use a search engine, use an app, and watch videos. It's interesting to me, my mother um, asked for an e-reader for Christmas, so we got her a Kindle. And um, then she saw my Kindle Fire, and she decided she wanted that instead. My mother is 75, my dad is 80. They have two computers at home because they always fight over who's online at the time, so they finally had to each get their own computer. Um, when they travel, which they do a lot, they have one giant clunky laptop, and they used to fight all the time over who got to be online when they had the laptop. But now that my mother's gotten her Kindle Fire, uh, it's really interesting. She uses that for her email, for Facebook, and those are the things she cares about the most, although she just joined Twitter, which completely freaks me out. All right, so what are we doing on smartphones? Well, most people say they use it to stay connected. No surprise, that includes checking email and social networking. And we're gonna talk more about social networking because social networking is huge on mobile devices. Um, but it's interesting that 82% say they use it to research information and read news. So that includes reading news articles, looking up specific information, sports, um, stuff for work, health information, all that kind of thing. Then navigation, entertainment, and planning are the big activities. But the other thing we know is that people use smartphones to multitask. Um, by the way, all of the numbers, I've either tried to leave the identification on here or put the source of the data, but I will give you one link at the end that has links to all of the research. So that if you wanna go and find any of this stuff yourself, I'll give you links to all of that. Uh, so, no surprise, right? We're standing in line, everybody whips out their phone to kill the time. Socializing, 40% uh, of us using the restroom. How many of you saw that article about how many phones had gross and disgusting germs on them? Yeah, it was nasty. Uh, but, you know, now I know why. Uh, the, one of the numbers that really surprises me here is this bottom one, 8% taking a shower or bathing. I'm not sure how that works, but... <laughs> seems hazardous. <laughs> okay. Uh, search is huge on smartphones. Most people access information either directly through a link or search. So, um, and the number one thing, the kind, number one kind of thing they search, yay, news, followed by dining and restaurant information, navigation, entertainment, sports. On down the line. We do know that people use their mobile phones for um, connecting to social media. And this is part of the reason why um, mobile internet access is so high in minority communities, because minority communities are also very active in social media spaces. Uh, 
So nearly two-thirds of active Twitter users access, access, I can talk, social networking sites using their phone. After my um, phone got stolen and I tweeted out that, it, that I had lost it, uh, a friend of mine tweeted back, condolences, but what do you type in your tweet on? I said, who knew you could do this on your computer too? A third of all Facebook posts are now coming via mobile which is um, surprising enough, but then um, a pretty large chunk of them are actually coming from m.facebook, the mobile site, rather than an app. So there are a lot of people accessing Facebook, either on feature phones or through a link to the web, to the browser version of Facebook. We also know that people really want local information on their phones. 95% of smartphone users have looked for local information. Location of a store, hours, how to find someplace, how to get somewhere, weather, all of those kinds of things are part of local. Uh, and this is a hideously nasty slide that I need to sort of redo so you can actually understand it. Uh, but it's sort of what are the things people are looking for in local information. And no surprise, probably, weather, number one. Um, the dark blue is last year, the light blue is this year, so you can sort of see the growth in the, kinds of, um, in the traffic to those kinds of things. So weather, search, um, maps, movies, restaurants, traffic reports. You know, a number of those that in the news space we can be active in. And I think we need to be more active in providing people information sort of based on their location. And the good news is people actually really want news on their mobile devices. Almost half of all cell phone owners, that's not just smartphone owners, that's any cell phone, have access news on their phone. So um, having a feature phone doesn't prevent you from looking for news, and people actually, it turns out, want news, yay! We know that on mobile news sites, um, it's for most sites adding somewhere between 10 and 20% to their traffic right now. Um, 3 11, 11 who knows, who remembers? One year ago, what happened that day? The Japanese earthquake and tsunami, correct. They had almost 14 million mobile page views that day for people looking for information about the earthquake. And in that following 10 days, they had more than a million app downloads. People wanted information about that and downloaded their app to get it. So that's good news for us. The CBC, Canadian Broadcasting, and this is their website, their mobile site, by the way. This is not an app. Uh, the last election, which was in May, if I'm not mistaken, um, they found that about a third of their traffic that night came from mobile devices. And this is in uh, a country where they actually have lower penetration of cell phones and pretty spotty cell phone coverage in, in vast areas. Las Vegas, KLAS TV, has about half of their traffic coming from cell phones. Um, it may be peculiar to Las Vegas, with people traveling and visiting, but um, still half of all their traffic is from mobile. One of the things we know too is that people are using multiple screens at a time. They are not just using TVs or just their mobile device or just their tablet. This was me uh, last election night trying to watch the election on four screens, which I don't advise. It'll make you a little insane, but we do know that uh, almost two-thirds of us watch TV and use the internet, everyone. Everyone in this room, I assume, has watched TV and browsed the internet at the same time, yes. Um, so we use our smartphone while we're listening to music, while we're watching TV, while we're using the internet. Not sure how this works again, reading the newspaper or magazine or reading a book, but we do. even more multitasking going on with mobile than with our laptops. 40% watching TV and or, and using their tablet or their smartphone. 
Um, on the, you flipped that, and 80% of mobile phone owners say they mobile multitask while watching TV. How many of you have checked your phone since you got here tonight? Okay, you're not hurting my feelings. I would be checking my cell phone if I wasn't up here. So very much mobile and television is a multitasking experience. Um, those of you interested in broadcast, I think this is particularly important. Um, of the top five TV categories for multitaskers, reality TV. I don't know what it is about reality TV that drives us to multitask. Uh, but number two is actually news, followed by comedy, sports, food. Now some of this is people on social media, right? They're commenting about the show they're watching or tweeting. Um, but that's not actually the majority of what we're doing. Um, this is Nielsen numbers that talk about what people are doing while they're watching TV. What I think is interesting, the most interesting thing about this, number one thing we're doing is checking email. I assumed that during the commercials our checking would go up, but it turns out it's pretty much exactly the same during the program as it is during the commercials. So we're not waiting for commercials to check. And um, the other thing we're doing largely is surfing for unrelated information. And again, no difference basically between during the program and during the commercial. But it's not all bad news. Um, as much as half of CNN's audience for election night, 09, were on CNN mobile, CNN tele were watching CNN television, and at some point in the evening also came to CNN mobile. So their assumption is that people were watching the news, the general overall election night, and using their mobile device to find the local information, to find out about their particular races and what was going on in their area. All right, so now we're about to talk mostly about phones, and now we're gonna talk some about tablets. Up to this point, when we talk about tablets, we're still talking about iPads. It's about 90, 94%, somewhere in there. I really think that's gonna change in the next year or two, but for now, when, these, when we talk about these tablet numbers, we're largely talking about iPads. All right. About 19% now own tablets, and about 19% own e-readers. That number doubled from Thanksgiving to New Year's. People got a lot of tablets and e-readers for Christmas. So um, it really, literally, in a few weeks, doubled the numbers, and that had doubled from the six months before. So the growth rate is very, very rapid for people who own tablets and e-readers. Um, and about 9% of people now own both, which was interesting to me. I sat next to a woman on the plane yesterday who had an e-reader that she pulled out and then she pulled out her iPad and handed it to her kid to entertain him and then she went back to her e-reader, so. Uh, women are more likely to own e-readers and men tablets. When they asked why, men said, I want others to say wow when they see my electronics. That's <laughs> a <So> guy. <laughs> All right, and then we throw these things into the mix. These used to be classified as e-readers. This is the Kindle Fire and the Barnes & Noble Nook. Um, since they came out, um, one of the big uh, research agencies, IDC, has started to reclassify what they call e-readers. And they're no longer calling these e-readers, they're calling them tablets. And now it's only things that use e-ink that they're calling e-readers. Um, ownership has doubled. Uh, in some, for some magazines, um, subscriptions on the Nook Color equal or surpass the number uh, that of people who have subscriptions on their iPad. So these are very much news devices and reading devices. Um, again, very heavy minority penetration. Hispanics especially are much more likely to own uh, e-readers and um, those who make more than $75,000 a year are more likely to own them, no surprise, as well as the college educated. Um, this is mostly interesting because those of us who have worked on the web sort of recognize the gold line, which is the typical traffic thing, which is about seven, eight o'clock, people start to get online, a little bump up at lunchtime, steady decline throughout the day with a little bump in the evening. The light blue line is mobile, 
which pretty much says that when we're awake, we're using our phones. And then tablets have almost the inverse of the computer lines. So tablets very heavy, very early in the morning, six, seven o'clock, a big peak. And then again, eight, nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night, a big peak. And again, you see it sort of totaling about 8% at this point. Weekends, pretty similar, a little flatter line, um, but pretty much the same pattern. All right, so who they are, tablet owners are middle-aged or slightly younger. They tend to be over 35. I suspect that's a function of income. Um, more male than female, wealthier than the general population. Still very much an early adopter market. Oh, I think now, this year, I think we'll see that switching from people who are um, eager to have the latest technology to more of the general population. Again, racially very diverse group. Um, if you combine it with the people who own e-readers, the number moves much closer to the general population. The balance of male-female, um, the age gets a little broader. And when? Mostly people don't use their tablets at work. As we saw in that spike, it's very early and evening hours. Um, it's very still much a leisure, leisure device. There's a small number of people using it for work, but that number has not really shifted. It's somewhere between 7 to 10% of owners that actually use it for a work device. The vast majority use it as a leisure device. Weekdays, weekends, it's all the same. I love this part, where? This is from the Reynolds Journalism Survey. Mostly home, on a couch. <laughs> Most people use it on a couch, yay. Uh, the number two spot, dining room table. And in bed. And more use of e-readers in bed than tablets. I don't know why. And traveling, the biggest use outside the home is for people traveling, taking it along to read and keep up. Again, see, really, mostly at home. A little bit on the go, a little bit at work. All right, here's the good news for news. How long are people using these devices? The answer is long. Uh, the Financial Times in England um, has, does not release their exact numbers, but they said they find their tablet users are more engaged and spend a long time. Google says about 68% of tablet owners use it at least an hour a day and that the session lengths are considerably longer than what we see on either computers or mobile devices. So if you look at, if you combine those who spend an hour or more, it comes to 68% of the total. So people are spending a very, very long time. If you compare that, again, to other devices, it's way longer. Um, using tablets for email, games, books, video, but Again, news very, very high in what people are doing on their tablets. Yay! Um, this was kind of interesting from Pew's big study this last year um, that they did in, in collaboration with The Economist magazine. 30% um, of people say they spend more time getting news now than they did before they owned a tablet. Uh, and that they've turned to new sources on their tablet and that they regularly read in-depth articles. So there's a lot of interest in reading. Um, Meredith, who publishes uh, Better Homes and Gardens, among other many other things, says that um, they have found that their tablet users are really very interested in video and interactivity, sort of things they can engage with. That touch interface really gets people to wanting to sort of be interactive with the material. I don't know how many of you have a tablet that have played with it and touched a graphic and tried to get it to work and nothing happened and it made you so aggravated. It's like, I was wanting things to spin and move. Uh, but they said their e-reader users um, are just happy to have a portable thing they can take along. So very different expectations. Um, Nielsen says people are looking for longer form, high production value content on their tablets. Uh, that includes, they define that as including games, high quality magazine content, and video. Um, so number one use of, of tablets, <laughs> games. 
followed by searching emailing. But again, very high numbers of people actually interested in reading the news and consuming music and videos and reading books. Um, more and more consistently, we're seeing numbers that saying people actually are pretty, doing a pretty high consumption of video on the tablets. So again, for broadcast outlets, this is a really important thing. They need to have their video available and um, usable on tablets, and many, many don't. Um, so number one, people are using YouTube kinds of stuff, music videos. Um, but really, they're interested in professional video clips, original web shorts, and news clips even higher than sports clips, which actually kind of shocks me, and I'm not sure I actually believe that, but it could be true. All right. The Daily Telegraph says their users are not interested in breaking news on the tablet, but they do want video, they like graphics, and they were really, really mad until they put their crossword puzzle out there. iPad users like magazines. Uh, almost half of iPad users in the uh, Nielsen survey said they were planning on purchasing both digital and print magazines. And they really like news. They like us. They really like us. They are big news consumers. Um, the Reynolds survey, which is really interesting, but um, a little skewed because they, they uh, interviewed news users. I mean, they found their users via news sites. So. Uh, I take it with a grain of salt, but um, they said 80% said that news was their top use when they were browsing. CNN has seen a 100% jump in their video views on their tablet in six months. And again, they had over 6 million app downloads. So, the BBC? Um, found that their readers said they were accessing local news, national news, and international news much more frequently than a lot more, to be exact on the wording, uh, than they had before they had a tablet. So again, yay. Um, the BBC also found that they had a very strong attachment to their favorite news apps and a very strong attachment to their favorite news brands on their tablets. So. Um, Brands that people care about are an important thing on tablets, and again, we have to meet that interest. The one thing people said they would like the most is a way to personalize their tablet um, app and also some interactivity. This is less good news in uh, when they asked how much people would be willing to pay for news on their tablets. About 14% had paid for news in some way, shape, or form, either by a subscription or downloading a paid app. Um, and about uh, a fourth of them had a subscription that included tablet access. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we look at these, um, these little case studies I'm going to talk about. And uh, so, yeah, the not so good news. Mostly people aren't willing to pay. Uh, of the people who hadn't already paid for content, mostly they said they weren't really too excited about paying for it. Even $5 got a very small number of people who said yes. Um, at this point, what newspaper publishers are offering um, is a combination of things. An exact replica of the print product, typically sort of basically a PDF with live links, um, with all editorial and advertising, some kind of replica that contains some of the editorial or advertising. Uh, about half are doing a non-replica curated specifically for the mobile audience. And about 20% of folks have actually produced a single topic app or product of some kind related to their brand. It might be a sports app, a shopping app, a something. Um, I monitor which rates apps uh, and tracks the presence and pricing of apps on by news organizations. Um, says that they think, but by 2015, half of circulation for some publications will be via tablets. Currently, they said um, some have as much as 10% of their traffic on tablets, um, but more commonly, it's about three to four percent at this point. 
The ones they rated the most successful were those that were grounded in the print product but not wedded to it. They were not replica editions. They were easily navigable, included a navigation guide, added rich media of some kind. They were very strongly curated. The people had chosen sort of the content deliberately for the tablets. And they got the tech details right. They were stable. They optimized downloads so that they weren't these giant 20-minute downloads. And issues could be deleted to save space. OK, so that's sort of a look at super fast look at the research. Uh, I promise I'm done with percentage numbers now. Uh, but I want to talk about sort of three news organizations that are looking at mobile and how each of them are looking at the mobile product. Um, the Dallas Morning News, which has looked at investing in technology resources. The Orange County Register, which works very hard to update their strategy based on traffic. And Wirtschaftsblatt in Vienna, which is a business daily newspaper there that's looking at a very specialized audience. I spoke with Mark Medici, who has since left the Dallas Morning News and gone to the Austin American Statesman. Um, Mark publicly said uh, that he thought that at some point that they would no longer be printing a daily paper. And not too long after that, he left for Austin. So I don't know whether those were tied or not. But, um, but what they did was really invest in finding out about their market and um, figuring out how they could technically um, do this market research. So they did uh, audience market research, the newspaper market research. They combined household segments with PRISM data, which is the Nielsen household data. So they actually really drilled down to know exactly who their subscribers are. And they connected their tablet subscriptions, tablet and mobile subscriptions, to that data. So basically, they know a lot about the people who are buying subscriptions. And then they followed up with focus groups. So really, it makes me so happy. I mean, we so, so rarely do extensive audience research. And so they spent a lot of time sort of really talking to folks about their mobile products. And Mark said what it did was confirm their assumptions. First of all, that people really wanted breaking news on mobile devices, that they liked and wanted sports verticals, and that they really liked entertainment news. So the Dallas Morning News has a tablet app. And they have um, Android and iPhone phone apps, along with their Sports Day High School phone app. So um, what they're learning is that they have met people's expectations, but not exceeded them and that they have yet to figure out how to get their technology to work across four platforms, um, print, web, mobile, tablet. So what's next for them is they really are working on how do we surprise and delight? How do we give people something that they're going to be very excited about and really want to engage with? And they also want to work further on what content on what device, on really being thoughtful about what they highlight in the mobile space versus what gets highlighted in the tablet and what gets highlighted on the web, and really understanding the difference in the audience or the difference in when people are coming to them for what kind of news. They're exploring HTML5 solutions, which is this idea of responsive design, this idea that you can design the page once and it will smoothly and cleanly adapt for any size screen, which I really think is actually going to be an important thing um, for all of us in the future because we just can't possibly design sites for 2-inch screens, 4-inch screens, 7-inch screens, 9-inch screens, 11-inch screens, 22-inch screens. And we just we don't have the resources, the mental energy, any of that to, to design for all of these. So we have to find solutions that will look elegant and readable um, no matter what size screen people are coming on. Um, they want to continue to develop their niche content. They want to sort of explore more and more sort of these small um, apps. Besides sports, they're looking at whether they can do a restaurant app. Uh, something that would deliver restaurant reviews based on people's location. Um, they're looking at what other content in those sort of small areas that people might be interested in. And then the other thing they want to do is actually be able to uh, understand their metrics that they're getting 
Right now, they have trouble separating out their mobile metrics from their tablet metrics, from their web metrics. They sort of it's, said it's a little fuzzy science at this point, and they want to get better and making it so they understand really where the traffic's coming from and what, what people are doing while they're there on each of their devices. All right, the Orange County Register. Uh, I spoke with Sonia Quick, who's their mobile content leader, and they really do study their traffic and are really looking at what they're learning about their audience based on page views. Um, they're watching traffic patterns, what, pe what stories people are reading, what devices they're coming on. They actually now send out daily news notes, like the web news notes, what's popular on the web. They're putting out notes on what people are reading on their iPhone, what people are reading on Android, what people are reading on the tablets. Um, and they're tracking alerts. They have some 27, 29 different alerts people can sign up for daily news, local news, all kinds of alerts, and they're really paying attention to who's signing up for which alerts, how many people are interested in which things. So based on that, oh, wait, this is their tablet app, which is actually branded the Peel uh, to separate it out from the register itself. They wanted it to have its own personality and its own, um, so people weren't, wouldn't come to it thinking they were going to necessarily get uh, a replica of the newspaper. One of the interesting things they do is they do additions. They're one of the few places that are sort of um, playing with this idea of additions. So they have an addition ready for that very early morning crowd, which tends to be a harder news, sort of what's, what's going on in the world kind of addition. And then the afternoon, evening edition, which is very, very oriented to entertainment and to feature pieces and lighter stories. They also have uh, a high school varsity tablet app, and they have a number of phone apps. What's really interesting about them is how much you can customize it based on location. You can see from this first screen, we're only through the C's in terms of communities in Orange County. So you really can sort of drill down into the various communities if you're interested in, in just your local news. So what they're learning, oddly enough, they had so much traffic to the obits that they added an obit tab. Who would have guessed? And why? I'm not sure why in Orange County there's so much interest in obituaries, but there you go. They found it that on iPhones, their traffic is pretty equivalent to their apps and to the web, to the mobile web. And that iPhone traffic is about twice that of Android phones right now. Um, Android users are much more likely to use the mobile browser than, their, than the Android app. And that the use case, how people are using, what they're consuming from their mobile devices is very, very different from what they're seeing from their website. Um, the good news is they're finding that while the visits on mobile are very brief, they are actually, half of the mobile audience visits twice a day. And those of us who know web stats know that's actually a lot. If we could get people to our, our, mob, our websites twice a day, we'd be thrilled. So the mobile audience is a very regular visitor. She also talked about how fast is very different on mobile devices. She said because they have these alerts, they know people are, you know, have created this expectation that as soon as something happens, I'm going to get an alert on my phone like right now. This is not the sort of five minutes you can wait on the web, um, which seems very, very fast compared to the newspaper or television. You have to have it right now. Um, so they're really updating their strategy based on this data. They're sort of looking for ways, they're exploring how people can either scan codes or check in at locations, um, how they can do a better job of notifying people about the things they want to be notified, how they help people find news they're interested in on the mobile devices, um, how they can help people create content and contribute it. Uh, particularly on the iPad, they want to find ways to let people do more exploration more participation and let people do research. This is particularly true, she said they're looking at ways, again, restaurant, is it, you know, can we give them information on restaurants, on shopping, and what is the kind of things they want to research in their area? So what's next for them? They're updating and they rebranded um, the app. It, did, it was just the OC register, and now it's the Peel. Um, they don't have good separate mobile and tablet analytics, so they're really working on separating out those. Sonia says in two to four years, she thinks their traffic will be one-third web, one-third mobile, one-third tablet. 
And what that's going to do is impact newsroom shifts and deadlines because of this idea that mobile is like right now. So she says right now they're still largely staffed around a newspaper schedule. Sh they've shifted some for the web, but she thinks this is going to force more shifting to the earlier, um, earlier times of day. And it's going to affect uh, the deadlines people are used to. And finally, we'll talk about Wirtschaftsblatt. I talked to Alexis Johan, who's the managing director of digital there. They're interesting because they serve a very specialized audience. And they are just, they are now currently in the process of reorganizing to what he calls mobilista, mobilista, and what we would call mobile first. We're talking a lot about this idea of mobile first, designing for the mobile platform, and then designing web and uh, print. Um, it's a fairly new publication. They launched in 2007. They were the first in Austria with iPad and mobile editions. Um, right now, 90% um, of their apps are iOS apps, 5% um, Android and 5% other, which is actually really surprisingly low because BlackBerry still has a pretty good hold in some parts of Europe. But they have seen 100% year-over-year mobile growth every month. So he said the amount of traffic is just growing exponentially um, from mobile devices. Currently, they have 19 content channels. That's, you know, sort of categories of content. Uh, this is their iPad app. It is sort of a uh, replica plus. It looks like the newspaper every day, but if you, you know, there's embedded videos, there's a few other things that go along with this. Um, so they're working on changing that. They also have um, an iPhone app, which again is a replica plus edition, and a stock market app. But they are in the middle of redesigning everything. Um, they're going to be relaunching their product in June 2012, uh, reducing their channels from 19 to 4. And this is based around thinking about mobile, thinking you can't possibly get through 19 categories in a drop-down menu on a mobile device. So reducing it to 4. News, features, and trends, which he says means make me smarter, people and opinions, and can, what he called candy, which he says, it has to be sexy. I'm not sure what sexy is in a business magazine, but a business publication, but I didn't want to uh, make it sound like I don't think business is interesting. So in, in June, they're going to relaunch their website with the redesign, uh, and then the mobile, um, and then the tablet. The tablet will have latest news features and the newspaper content, but it will no longer be a replica. They're working on cleaning up their site architecture, adding more features and analysis. They've been very, very oriented to daily market kind of news. Um, and so what they're trying to do now is figure out what kinds of features and analysis their audience would be interested in reading. This is, this is to aim at the tablet market that they know is going to sit there and read. A lot of market news will be old news by the end of the day. So they're looking for what kinds of things people might want to read on their tablets. Um, they want to add more social media and user-generated content, although, again, they're trying to explore what does that mean for a business publication? What kinds of things are people looking for? Um, how do they want to interact with other people? And they've discovered that they need new tools to be able to publish. So they're working on developing new tools for publishing across platforms. Um, they think that within two to three years, mobile will be their largest channel. Uh, well, one of the fun things about them is they've started to use um, augmented reality apps in, re in conjunction with the newspaper. So that if you get the newspaper, you can hold up your phone to a picture and it will play the video that's associated with that story. So it's sort of a step past QR codes. It's actually sort of the photo actually triggers um, the information you're looking for. So it's kind of a fun thing. And they are also developing an investor app for the general public that's looking at investing. So there we go. So what we know about the mobile audience, it's very broad and very diverse. People want local information. They want fast information. Tablets, on the other hand, they like in-depth. They like to explore. And they're heavy readers. Both want news, weather, and video. And both are multitaskers. So, the implications for news then are 
we need to create both apps and strong mobile sites. A lot of places have done one or the other, or sadly, neither. Uh, and so it's going to be important that we're good both in a browser and in an app. And we need to keep multitasking in mind. What does that mean? How do we sort of get it, you know, do things that will help people sort of engage with us on multiple platforms? And that's, I think, especially true for television news. And we need to create products for multiple screen sizes. So we have a lot to figure out. It means how do we design our next generation apps and sites? How will we localize mobile information? This is really a tough one technically to get around. I mean, in theory, it's easy to put a GPS code on a story, but really, what does that mean? When do you want, what kind of location do you want to attach to a story? And then how do you deliver those things based on where people are? How do we enrich the mobile and tablet experience? People want interactivity. What does that mean on a tablet? What does that mean on mobile? And how do we realistically present on multiple platforms? We can't possibly design apps for everything. So those are the challenges for us. If you want more information, we've got some webinars talking about the mobile news audience. Uh, I have a seminar coming up, which the deadline is technically over. Oh, it's actually running in two weeks from now, but if you really desperately want to come, I have some pull on that seminar. Uh, and all of the links here of what we've talked about, you can find at uh, this one URL. We'll spill all the research I've used in creating this talk. And also, feel free to contact me if you have more questions. If you want a copy of this, let me know. I'll be glad to give you a version of this. So that's, that's it. So I'm hoping there are at least a few questions out there. I haven't numbed you with numbers. We have our folks standing by. Yes, here. Um, what have they done? I'm sorry. What have they done locally to keep up with this? Yeah. I mean, in Phoenix? Yeah. Good question. Lynn, you have anything to uh, contribute on this? What's, what's happening locally in the mobile space? Lynn here is from uh, KPNX across the street. KPNX and the Arizona Republic and azcentral.com all together one, that big looming Happy building family. over there. Yes. <laughs> um, here, I, AZ Central is just exploding. The web traffic is out of control. The thing I think you're going to see next for us is really working up our apps because right now our app looks a lot like other people's app and we were just blessed to kind of be the 800 pound gorilla of being fed by the Republic and 12 News. But we want AZ Central to feel like its own entity that you're not just reading the newspaper or watching the newscast regurgitated. So it's getting a lot more of its own content that's unique to it. And, um, and to make it more mobile friendly. Right now, if you go to the AZ Central mobile site, it's, it's a little clunky and, and, and unwieldy to use. So I, I think right now that's probably our biggest concentration, not to mention adding staff. So you guys take those web classes. <laughs> Can you speak a little bit about how um, some of these different organizations are monetizing uh, using mobile and tablet applications? Sure. There's a couple of different ways people are looking at that. Um, there are people, especially things like the sports apps. Um, Miami, for instance, every season for each of the different professional sports teams, and I actually think for um, a couple of the college teams, has an, an app specific to that team. Um, it costs 2 or $3, and it's an annual thing if you want it. You buy it per season, basically. So that's what they're doing. Um, what the Dallas Morning News... Um, the Oklahoma City paper, a number of others are doing is creating subscriptions that are sort of these flexible subscriptions that you can buy essentially an all access pass that gets you full access, all platforms, um, which usually it comes with a newspaper subscription. But they are also doing things like, um, you know, you can buy the Sunday paper in digital seven days a week uh, for a slightly different price. Um, you can buy a digital only. So, um, in fact, in um, 
Oklahoma City, the guy I talked to there said he really thinks that sort of that Sunday paper, seven days digital is kind of going to be their sweet spot in terms of subscriptions, especially new subscriptions. So there's sort of a wide range of people experimenting with things, but I do think this sort of um, different subscription rates for different access is probably going to, we're going to see a lot of that this year, a lot of places experimenting with that. There seems to be actually some success at that. The question is, you know, these sort of paywalls that are going up, you know, sort of there's a lot of variation in how successful those are being, and then they're going to be dependent on the paywalls. If the paywalls don't work, then you're not going to be able to sort of sell these different access kinds of things. I think, I think this coming year we'll see a lot of interesting developments in that. If, if the paywalls work and people are willing to pay something, then I think that's going to be cross-platform sort of, we'll see these more and more of these kinds of subscriptions. Um, so with, a, with all the, the apps that are coming out for, on different platforms, a lot of small papers are struggling to keep up with the digital advancement. How do you see digital publications uh, or even small local publications, which are still very important news, how do you see those keeping up um, as you know, more platforms come out and sort of viewership almost fragments onto different platforms? I really think that's where this sort of idea of designing wants and um, publishing on multiple platforms is going to be important, this idea of this responsive design, you know, designing a site that can handle gracefully um, multiple screen sizes, multiple platforms that looks good across, you know, it's really, it's the web, but it's designed in a way that you can sort of, it can be very, very functional. Um, I think that, I don't think that's going to be true just for small news organizations, although I think it's going to be especially critical for them. But I do think that's going to be really important. I think you know, there are some estimates that say in two or three years, apps are going to kind of be, you know, um, passe. I don't know if that's true. I think there's always going to be some things that will be cool in apps, but I think um, for a lot of places, that'll, they're going to move most of their effort to, to um, browser-based publication. And then you can also skip the iTunes store. Responsive design in HTML5. I, I mean, sure. it's something that we haven't really discussed much, and at least in the online media class, but something that I've become more interested in. Well, partly we haven't talked about it more because not very many people are doing it. Really, the Boston Globe this year came out with just a very nice um, responsive design site, but that is sort of the best and really only still um, site that's come to it. And they, you know, they invested a lot of money and energy in doing that design and brought in outside folks to help them with it. It wasn't just their staff folks. They had some pretty, some of the sort of leading lights in this responsive design idea worked with them on developing their site. I suspect, I hope, that sort of as we go along here and as more and more people do it, there's going to get to be some tools and some easier solutions for that. But for right now, it's, um, it's still really early days, and it's, um, it takes a lot of work and, you know, some pretty specialized knowledge. But I, I think it's going to be good in the long run. I know several places saying they're working on it, so we'll see. I think, I think in the next six months, you'll probably see three or four other major places, and then six months after that, we'll start to see more and more folks using it to uh, publish their sites. Anybody else? Last call? All right, thank you guys, it was fun.